What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Okay, Saturday, BYU football wrapped up. Spring practices, 15 in the books. Head coach Kalani Stake spoke to the media about his thoughts, especially about how physical the camp was. Happy with the team, the camaraderie, the connection that they're having with each other. And uh, I think if they can go into this offseason conditioning like they did during the you know January and February, I feel really good about where we'll be by the time we start camp in August. There's always there's always scares that happen, and, and there's I mean there's some guys that got banged up that I wish didn't happen, but I don't I don't know any other way to get better in football than than to to go live. I mean we put the quarterbacks live quite a bit too, and, and if we're going to do what we want to do with our quarterbacks, we have to. That's that's just the game. So Dave, uh, what are some of your top takeaways? What'd you learn from BYU spring football? Probably the biggest takeaway is how fast it went. And there was a diversion with basketball in the big dance to where it was like Saturday it was it and it was over. It's like, well, what happened? It went, it went by so fast where in years past yep. is every day all the time. Uh, so that was a little different for us this time around. Um, I like the vibe there. Uh, and, but it's all about the quarterbacks at BYU. Yeah. And I thought the most important thing, and, and you talked with Aaron about it, um, which we'll hear in a few minutes, the most important thing to me was when he came out and said, we will not be adding another quarterback from the portal, which means we're good with these two guys. Mm -hmm. And then the battle is between these two guys, between now and, and Southern Illinois. And had that been, you know what, we're going to still go out and find a quarterback that would tell you that they weren't happy with these two. That would two. have been a wild statement. So that was probably the biggest thing that I was looking for Saturday. When, yeah. I, when I heard it, I'm like, okay, we're running that's their guy. These. One of them's their guy. Yeah, Jake and Gary. I've never walked out of spring practice and been like, I know exactly what's going to happen this fall. Right. It's, it is uh, you know, full of guys who are sitting out due to injuries uh, from – last season and you know you guys have guys in boots you have guys in slings some of which are, are big pieces right you don't have all the guys you signed per se you have some mid-year enrollees but not a ton so yeah I'm with you the quarterback battles on um, I wonder who would start today if BYU had a game I would think based on the rhetoric from Aaron Roderick that it's Jake Retzloff given that he knows the playbook more both are going to be used. I promise you both are going to start a game this year. That's just how it goes, right? There's either injuries or ineptitude. I doubt that BYU has one guy who's awesome all year. Um, some stuff happens. Uh, but other thoughts. Jack Kelly is going to be a dude at linebacker. Weber State transfer. One of the last, if not the last, kind of guy from Weber State that's going to come down from the Jay Hill uh, era up there. Killing it on the field, uh, in the weight room. He is going to, I think, start and be a, a nice tandem there with Ben Bywater. And this uh, isn't going to be awesome. This isn't just one guy saying that. This is everybody. When you bring up this guy's name, yes. they've got something good to say about it. Yes. And then and, you're going, okay. Yep. Then he must be. T probably tomorrow you hear, hear my conversation with Jay Hill about Jack. Keanu Hill, that experiment is working at uh, tight end. No longer really an experiment. It is what it is. He's going to be good there. And Aaron Roderick, you'll hear that later, as mentioned. I asked him a little bit about his ability to block as well. It's, he's not just a pass catching tight end. Right. He can play in line, which is nice. Because now when you throw him out there, you're not like, okay, it's a pass. <laughs> you, he, you can disguise some things. The O-line does need one to two dudes in the portal. That, that much said by Aaron Roderick. So that's interesting. I don't know that that's necessarily to come in and start right away, although that's what you want. You want a guy that's going to compete. But they just need another one or two bodies there. They like the running backs, which is really interesting to me. I'm surprised that for... Not a third year in a row, they're, they're not going to bring one in. They like L.J. Martin and Hinkley Ropati, the calm Falau, and Miles Davis. Um, and given the, the uh, experience, you know, these guys aren't like super experienced. Miles Davis has played 19 games, but he's not been like the number one or two yet. L.J. was the number one last year, got kind of banged up at the end of the year. And then Hinkley Ropati had an ACL tear uh, where he didn't participate. They're going to run with these three. They're ready to go. I feel like they're going to shop and add another one. Mm. Um, just in, in what Aaron said when he said, we have some guys coming in. They're going to help us right away. He didn't say who. Uh, the portal doesn't open until April 16th. Was he referring to running backs specifically? I don't, no, or the but offense? Just, just in general. Okay. And so then I'm thinking of areas that, um, that you've got to be really, really good in. And they spent so much time with the offensive line in the running game in spring that, um, that it feels like, if possible, that's going to be on their wish list of, hey, if there's a veteran runner out there um, that has a year left, um, like an A.J. Robbins or, or even a Chris Brooks, 
I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if they add to that spot. They don't yeah. need to add receivers. They don't need to add tight ends. They need linemen, as, as mentioned. Yeah. And I think then they're not going to add quarterbacks. So when you talk about we're getting some guys that are going to help, well, what group are we talking about? I, think I kind of feel like the running backs would be one of them. I wonder because, yeah, and you hear uh, what Aaron said regarding that uh, coming up later as well. A lot of teasing for the yeah. <laughs> interview. Uh, it's the greatest interview ever. Is, uh, yeah, I, I wonder what they need. Cody Hagan is a guy coming off a mission who could be an immediate impact guy, although – I'm not too big on guy off a mission make an impact. I, it just your it, body it, it needs hardly time. ever works out. Yeah, Cody's a special player. Is going to be another like Chase Roberts type guy, another Dax Milne type guy at uh, BYU. But I don't really like even Colin Chandler. I'm not like, hey, you got to average 15 a game off a mission. Like Tyler Haas was exceptional. He was like he's the only guy, maybe Kyle Collinsworth, who came off a mission where I was like, whoa, you were starter impact guy right away. So we'll see. And then the other thing is safety depth is kind of TBD. In that Jay Hill conversation, he said, hey, we have a lot of guys that I know we can win with. But, like, who is the guy at strong safety and free safety? We'll see what they uh, add in the portal. They certainly feel good about the continuity of bringing a lot of guys back. In fact, the men's basketball kind of principle was mentioned by Aaron. And so what, what can you do with the same guys? Just because you have them back, though, doesn't mean they're good. Like a, a crappy team in college football that brings back all its starters is probably still going to be crappy. I'm not referring to BYU. Right. I'm just saying the general idea. But can BYU, coming off 5 of 7, where they learn certain uh, lessons, they're in the Big 12 finally, can they put it together in certain spots? They made a couple of changes at positions where they felt like they needed more accountability. T.J. Woods done a nice job by all indications from players and coaches. The linemen love him. And the linemen love him. So let's go. Can the tight end group be a little more expansive? You lose Isaac Rex, but you move Keanu Hill over. Reiner Swanson's a big name. And will you reintroduce the tight end to the middle of the field? And, uh, and it hasn't been there for a while. Keanu Hill says, yeah, I'm, I'm the answer. I'm the that. guy. I'm the answer to that over the middle. Yeah. I like uh, the attitude. You know, everyone comes out of spring feeling pretty good. But yeah. there needed to be an attitude adjustment for year two in the Big 12 because they lost the last five games. And they got physically beaten up in several of them. Isaiah Banya, is a, a, I, I thought of him as you were talking about guys coming back. Mm -hmm. Can they be better than they were last year? Yeah. And in my interview with him, I was really impressed. He's changed his body. He's changed his attitude. He, and all this, him saying, I've changed my body. I've, I had to change my, my attitude. I've, I'm, I'm all in here in my second year of Jay Hill's defense, and we're ready to go. That's what you want to hear from a six foot three, 235 pound rush end slash hybrid linebacker. And, uh, and, and so I, I circle him and I go, well, he's a portal guy coming back. And if he in the in the basketball mold, if he can elevate his game to that spot, well, that answers a whole lot of getting to the quarterback, yeah. and stopping the run, two areas that that were addressed during camp. So, I, I but but I like the vibe of you, know, you can't win games on vibe, but you can you can go into an off season with an attitude that's going to make you bigger, stronger, faster coming back to camp. And wasn't that the three things that that Kalani said at the end of the season? We got to get bigger, stronger, faster, and every other pundit. In regards Always. to BYU as a yeah. P5, yeah. and and so it feels like that's what they're what the direction they're going, which is the direction they absolutely have to go. Tui Saili is uh, you know a big signee among the uh, junior college ranks, who is uh, big as pun intended. This dude's like 350. He is a massive D tackle. Can't wait to see him in action. Saw him in spring a little bit. Uh, did a nice job. I'm just wondering if he's going to be a three-down lineman or just a run stopper to get you to third and long to where Isaiah Banya, Tyler Batty, and the boys can get after it. So we'll see.